So we have two baby macaws here at my house today. And this is our formula that we're using for the macaws. Look at this little cutie right here. This little guy stores all of his food right here. We're going in to feed right now. Look at that. What is up everyone and welcome back to the channel. I hope all of you are having just an absolutely amazing day. Now guys, before we hop into today's video, I just wanna say thank you guys so, so much from the bottom of my heart for all the support on the merch. We've been selling a lot of merch. So for those of you that have ordered, thank you so much. And for those of you that are on the fence, guys, what are you waiting for? Get your Jacob's World merch today. Go right down below, the link's going to be there, jacobfetter.com if you wanna cop any merch. But anyways, it is time to hop into today's video. For today's video, we have two baby macaws here at my house today. Two baby blue-throated macaws. They are just absolutely adorable little baby macaws. Now, they are not our macaws. They are someone else. But my sister and I are going to be the ones that are going to be hand-raising these macaws until they are weaned off of formula and eating solid food. So without further ado, let's hop into today's video. And we are here now preparing the little macaw food. So right now we have the formula inside of this cup and we're taking the temperature. You know, we have to make sure that the temperature is just right for these baby macaws. If the formula is too hot or too cold, well, these baby macaws are not going to want to eat it. So it's got to be that right temperature. Hannah, what's the temperature that you think that they like best when you're feeding them? Well, the mom usually feeds them between a hundred and a hundred and six degrees. So this puppy has to be between a hundred and a hundred and five degrees. Yes, yeah, so basically we have to have the formula, like Hannah was saying, between 100 and 105 degrees. We have an entire station here set up for them. So we have different syringes for the different birds. We've got other baby birds here, but we're going to be feeding the macaws today. So we got these nice large syringes for the macaws. This right here is a enzyme that we kind of mix in their food that kind of helps digest the food for them, kind of helps it break it down some. And then this is our formula that we're using for the macaws. We're using the Katie exact hand feeding baby macaw bird formula. You can see on there, we've got a little baby macaw. This is the formula. This is the good stuff that's going to help make these birds nice and healthy. You can see it's this brown formula. It doesn't look like much, but what it is, is it has all of the necessary nutrition to grow strong, healthy birds. All right, Tana, what are we looking at? We're at 120 degrees. We need to get it down lower. We need to cool it off some. It's gonna so, take a little bit to cool down. Yeah, so basically what Hannah's doing right there is Hannah is stirring the formula. The reason why she's stirring the formula is by stirring that formula, it's going to help cool the formula down. And while we wait for the McCall formula to cool down, I'm going to go meet Hannah in the garage where she's feeding some of her other baby birds. <laughs> Here we are with Mr. Little Green Cheek. Now we haven't named this little guy yet. We're still waiting on names for people, but just look at him. He is just so adorable. Hannah's doing great. Hannah's raised him since he had like literally no feathers. Hannah, you're doing a good job. Thank you. Look at this little guy. So, so cute. Look at you. You want to step up? You want to step up, buddy? Oh, look at this little guy. He's such a friendly, cute little parrot. Oh yeah, look at that. That's some good food right there. Getting to actually hand raise these animals is the best way to do it because when you're actually the ones feeding them, the birds feel like you're their mother. And by doing so, you build a great bond with the birds. This little guy is being a bad boy. He does not want to eat his breakfast this morning. He is deciding that he's, you know, going to be a strong, independent bird and only eat pellets and seeds. You want to fly? We're trying to teach Larry to fly. We're trying to get his mobility, his stability going. Boy, do you want to fly? Oh, look at that. He's, he's using his wings. Go, 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 go down. No, you don't want to fly? What are you doing, bro? You're, you're supposed to fly. You're a bird. Oh my gosh. You are turning into a, a quite the flighty little guy. This little guy is a character. Wow. Oh my gosh. He's biting. Hey, ow. What are you doing? And now that we fed the little green cheek parrot, we've got to go inside and check the temperature of the macaw formula. One minute, 37 seconds later. Would you look at that? The temperature is 105.2 degrees, the exact temperature, which is the perfect temperature to feed these baby macaws. And there they are. Those are the baby blue-throated macaws. Now we kind of have this makeshift nest box for them. This is a large plastic bin that was actually a nesting box for some of my iguanas. We took this box right here and we actually cut a hole in it for the iguanas to nest in. But now it makes the perfect little nest box for these baby macaws. Now these baby macaws need to be kept at a nice warm temperature. So we have this nice heat panel on the top. When we take the temperature on the inside, it should be around 90 degrees or so. Let's shine in. Look at that. We're at 96 degrees on the birds. That is exactly what we want. Look at those little guys. And if you shine around, we have a nice gradient. Right here, we have 90 degrees. If we move this way, we have 87. So they have a nice little temperature gradient where they can move around and change temperatures. Oh my gosh, look at this little cutie right here. Hannah has moved him right over here, and he is here, and he's waiting for his formula. Look at that little beak. I mean, just look at this little guy. He is just so 
absolutely adorable. Now, we don't want to pet him too much. It can stress him out, but this guy is just one gorgeous little baby. Now, you can still see that he ha does not have his feathers fully coming in yet. It's kind of a fluff. It's just kind of fluff, and you can see some of his feathers coming in right over here. You can see the casings right there, but again, we don't want to stress him out too much. All right, Hannah has the little baby macaw, and well, we're going to start feeding him right now. She's kind of just getting his face position. This is a kind of a process right here, but basically what Hannah's doing right now is she is slowly putting in formula so it can swallow it, put it inside of its crop, but these guys just got here about two days ago, so they're still, you know, a little bit unsure of their environment. Oh, is that some yummy little formula? I mean, just look at this little guy's head. I mean, he's got just some gorgeous feathers, gorgeous colors, and you can see that blue throat. That's why they call them blue throat and macaws, because they've got that gorgeous blue throat, and their feathers are a little more orange compared to the regular standard blue and gold macaws. Look at this little guy right here. He is doing so, so well. So we actually have to hold him a certain way to get him eating, because again, these are small animals and a lot of times they're going to want to refuse food when they're away from the mom but again if they were to stay with the mom the mom kind of abandoned them that happens sometimes but with all captive birds you want them to stay with the mom for as long as possible so they can gain all of the mom's antibodies all of her immunity so these can be strong healthy birds you can only feed these little guys when their heads are bobbing or else they'll choke. You can see he's moving his neck back and forth. This little guy stores all of his food right here. That right here is called his crop. Now, you can feel it, and once that crop is completely filled up, he'll no longer eat. And that's how you know he is a nice, full, little baby bird. Look at this little guy go. He has a nice, full crop. It's getting there. I mean, you can see how it's just kind of droopy and hanging just right here. You can see that that's a nice, full crop. Hi, buddy. How are you doing? Guys, go right now and comment down below a name for these two little baby macaws. I want to know what you guys would name them. If you look at his little feathers, they are just starting to come in. And if you look, there's a little white casing around the feathers. That is a keratin casing. This casing has blood in it, and that's what's helping the little feathers develop. And you can see these are his wings right here, but you can see he's still got his tiny little gray feathers, and all of his little young bird feathers are slowly coming in. You can see this is where his wings are. He's got one wing right here. You can see it's just a very tiny little baby bird wing. I mean, this little guy doesn't even know what he is. He's just so adorable. I absolutely love this little guy. And if you look at his feet, you can see they look very scaly and almost like a dinosaur. Well, parrots and other birds are actually the real-life living descendants of dinosaurs. A lot of people think reptiles are descendants of dinosaurs, but, but it's actually the birds that are real descendants of dinosaurs. I mean, look at this little guy right here. He almost doesn't even look real. He almost looks like a stuffed animal, something out of a movie. I mean, look at him. He is just so animated and so beautiful. I cannot wait to watch these little babies grow up. We finished feeding bird number one. Now we're pulling out little macaw number two. Look at this little guy. So, so adorable. I mean, I absolutely love these little baby birds. I mean, who would not love a tiny little baby macaw? Now, guys, he's holding his head like that because he is a tiny baby. He has really not developed all the muscle in his neck needed to hold his head up nice and high. So that's why he's just kind of holding it a little bit low. But once we get the feeding started, he's going to keep his head up. We're going in to feed. Right now, look at that. So basically what Hannah's doing is she's getting the formula ready inside of the bird's mouth. She's putting just a little bit so she can fill his crop up. You guys saw on the last bird that the crop is on, you know, the front side of the bird. Hannah's doing just an absolute amazing job at feeding these little baby macaws. I mean, this takes a lot of skill and a lot of expertise to do so. So guys, if you want to see the journey that these little baby macaws are going on, well, go right now and subscribe to Hannah's channel. It's going to be linked down below. So if you want to see the baby macaws grow up, well, guess what? Go to Hannah's channel. That was a good meal, huh? I mean, look at this little cutie right here. I mean, this is just one absolutely gorgeous, beautiful little baby macaw. Look at him. He's just taking in his food, being a good guy. I mean, who would not want to have a little baby parrot? Now, guys, if any of you are considering owning a bird, please do your research. Birds are a lot of work. People think they're really cool and cute, but they're actually very loud. They need a lot of time spent with them, more time than most animals. If anyone wants to get a baby bird, make sure to do a lot of research and make sure you have the right resources and the right time to properly take care of them. We've got the formula and we're trying to complete our feeding. Now these little guys right now are being fed four times a day. So it really is a lot of work. People think working with animals is just a nine to five. Well, it is not that at all. Working with animals is a 24 seven lifestyle. And that my friends is going to end today 
today's episode. I hope all of you guys did enjoy watching today's bird video. This is the very first time that I've ever featured any parrots on my channel. I'm so, so glad that we are able to actually hand rear them. This is actually our first time hand rearing macaws, so it's going to be quite the adventure and quite fun. Guys, if you enjoyed today's video, please make sure to go give this video a thumbs up and make sure to go comment down below a name for these little baby macaws. We don't know if they're a boy or a girl yet, so go comment down below just two names, whatever you guys think they should be named. And guys, if you are not subscribed already, you enjoy the content, you want to see more parrots, tigers, lions, monkeys, all kinds of crazy stuff, well, what are you waiting for? Go right now, hit that subscribe button, and tap that little notification bell, and you all will be notified whenever I post 